Okay, in uh, part one of this video we um, created a CAD model using the automated file conversion utility. Uh, created um, this model from a model that we had in JET and then in SOLIDWORKS we uh, added strakes, we uh, cut out the rear end to uh, make it suitable as a wind tunnel model and we cleaned up some ugliness uh, that uh, resulted from the way jet models uh, surfaces. So at this point what we want to do is finish making um, the wind tunnel model. Now there's a little bit more cleanup we need to do before we go to that stage uh, if you look carefully at this uh, extruded cut that cut away the uh, extra bit of uh, vertical tail that stuck down below the fuselage, it made kind of a gouge in the rear fuselage. We could just sand that off, but we can also fix it by editing our sketch that we used for the loft. So that's what I think we ought to do. We notice that this loft cuts into the shape a little bit. And so if we edit that loft, that lofted cut, we can uh, maybe uh, fix that a little bit. Let's click on it first so we can see what's going on. Uh, notice that right here, the shape of the um, cross section is gouging into the fuselage. Well, we can just move that line and fix that problem. So let's over here hit the plus sign, get sketch 4, which is causing the problem, and then right click sketch 4 and let's edit sketch 4. And all we're going to do here is move this out so it doesn't gouge uh, into the fuselage. Uh, green checkbox, exit sketch. You can see that vestigial chunk of vertical tail that we cut away while the sketch is, or while the uh, extruded cut is rebuilding. Uh, and it didn't rebuild. Well, geometric condition. Uh, I must have moved the sketch for too much. Okay, so let's move it not so much and see what that looks like. See if it'll be okay now. No, well, okay. Um, let's control Z a couple times. Control Z. Control Z, Control Z. Control Z. Control Z. And Control Z, we'll back back to the gouge. Exit sketch. And we've still got the gouge. Alright, well, so uh, it is a little bit of a trick because uh, we have all of these edges lined up. And the extruded cut is easy for the program when that's the case. When we try to fix that. We make it more difficult, in this case too difficult, for the program to do what we're asking it to do. So I'm going to try something else. Okay, I'm going to try, uh, it looks like maybe, no it's perfectly good there, it's right in there where we're causing the problem. It's all in sketch 4 is the problem. Let's try just moving it a little bit. I 
and see if that works. Okay, well, a little bit helped. Let's try changing Sketch 4 a little bit more. And let's try to keep that side parallel. Maybe that was the problem. Maybe we were getting some self-intersecting geometry. Ah, much better. Okay, still there, but much smaller. Let's see if we can uh, move it out even more. Still gouging in there just a little bit. I'm going to move it out like that. And see this curvature here is not good. I think that's why um, the loft couldn't continue. We're going to try to make it match the shape better so that it's easier for it to loft. And Let's see if that doesn't work. All right. Now, there's still a little bit of a gouge, but it's not nearly so bad as it was, and it's in this, uh, it's actually part of the vertical tail that now that is no longer cut away, versus before we had a gouge into the fuselage. I'd like to try to fix that little bit that doesn't go away, uh, but it would be easy to sand off and for the most and it wouldn't affect the data so uh, we're going to call that good we're going to now do another thing that uh, we definitely should do to before we make a wind tunnel model let's do this front view which is a top view uh, in the aircraft coordinate system notice these uh, horizontal tails have this part that sticks out this point and you never see those points like that on actual aircraft that's because they always flutter if you build them so we're going to cut them off and it's easy we just plane one will do we'll take a make a sketch in plane one and we're going to do a extruded cut and I'm going to go all the way to the center line and I'm going to go back this way and I'm going to go like that and like that and this is uh, locked I don't like that let's make this coordinate 343 135 let's see if this coordinate is the same 343 145 um, okay so let's do this I copied it now I'm going to paste it here, and that fix that, and then I'm going to do the same thing with the 135.9, copy it, go over here, uh, and paste it in, only it's going to be minus. Okay, so that ensures if this point is on the zero center line, that ensures that these two angles would be the same. We could check them. Okay, that one's uh, 296 almost, uh, and this one is uh, 243, and then there's a little bit, 244 and 296. So, um, strictly speaking, we should make them parallel to these trailing edges, and they look pretty good. Um, in any case, uh, you can be very precise with that, but for this wind tunnel model, uh, this, is, uh, this looks really good. So we're going to use that. We're going to exit sketch. We're going to um, uh, highlight the sketch, or click on the sketch. 
stretch and do an extruded cut. It's going to be a lot of inches. It's going to be mid-plane, so we'll be sure to get it. And you can see what we did and check the box. And now it looks more like, well, I don't know, F-22 or horizontal tail or something like that. It looks more like something you'd actually see on a stealthy airplane. All right, well, we've got our model pretty much ready to go to the wind tunnel. Uh, we need to make it the appropriate scale. Remember we said we wanted to do 148 scale. So the way we do that is we go insert feature scale and then we're going to scale about the origin. We have to highlight, but just put a box around everything so it knows what to scale. And then we're going to go 148. Okay, that's what we want. We hit the checkbox, and there it is. There's a plane there that we probably want to make invisible so that. Um, we can get good oh yeah something else is out there that's not invisible it's one of those other planes let's make all these planes invisible there it is so that's what's making the zoom not work properly because it's trying to include that plane okay so now let's see if zoom works top view which is a front view and solid works nomenclature all right so the, here's our wind tunnel model, 148 scale. That gives us just exactly the right diameter of hole uh, because of the diameter we set at full scale. Um, and so we can put our um, force balance. There's, there's a carbon fiber tube that goes in that hole and then the force balance uh, fits inside that force balances on the end of the sting. This is how we get our uh, data. So we have to decide where we want to put the mount screw that holds the force balance in place. We've got the hole here, but we need to drill a 1 8 inch hole uh, down through the top of the model on center line that will go right through the center of the uh, carbon fiber tube and the, the hole that it fits in and go right through the center of the force balance. And uh, that needs to be where the aircraft's, uh, that needs to place the center of the force balance at the aircraft's neutral point. Now, when we, uh, we go back to jet and check where the aircraft's neutral point is, and then uh, measure that point in uh, CAD and then position the hole appropriately. Okay, so we bring up JET and uh, this is the JET model of the design we are creating the wind tunnel model of. We look at the X location of the neutral point 41.6 feet uh, aft of the nose of the aircraft. So we'll remember that 41.6 feet that's where we want to put our 1 8 inch hole. Let's go back here to SolidWorks and uh, we, we first want to select the uh, front plane and make a sketch and make a line from the point of the nose back to the back somewhere here where we think uh, the neutral point probably is. 
Okay. Delete that lock. Um, reference or whatever you want to call it. We're going to change the length of the line from 10.4 to 41.6 times 12 divided by 48. 41.6 feet, change it to inches, and then 148 scale. So we do that. Uh, we weren't very far from the right spot. Okay, so that's cool. All right. Now that point is uh, 10.4 inches, but that's the center of the force balance. The, the screw mount mount screw is 1.9 inches inches forward of the center of the force balance. So we want to subtract 1.9 inches. And that puts where the mount screw needs to go. Okay, so that's cool. I'm going to make a one eighth inch diameter hole right there. I'm going to make a hole. I'm going to put it right there. I'm going to make uh, the radius is going to be 0.125, so that the, the uh, no half of that 0 0.0. 625, so that'll be a 1 8 inch diameter hole. Okay, and now I can delete this line that I was using. Uh, delete that. I've got my hole in the right place. It's 1 8 inch in diameter. I can exit sketch, and I'm going to use that hole to, or use that sketch to make a hole up through it. I'm going to go mid-plane so that I'm cutting both above and below. That, we, that way we can put mount screws uh, through the top and the bottom. Hit the checkbox. I've got my mount screw hole now. Um, if you look at the tube and the way the mount screw goes in, we have some room. We could make a small extruded uh, recess for a cap screw. Cap screw heads are quarter inch diameter. So we would have to make a new plane to do that, and I think it's worth doing at least on the top. We generally just do one mount screw. Uh, if we need to, we can. Uh, but in general just one and so I'm just going to make a recess on the top side of this. Now the front plane is below, uh, is in mid plane, okay so that's not appropriate. Plane one is way up there so we could use it. So that just so that we don't have to make another plane. So let's do a top view and let's, uh, we're in plane one. We are not sketching. Ah, here we go. So there's our hole that we cut. And we're going to put a circle right there. And we're going to give it a radius of one point, or a point one two five. Okay, so that's our circle. We can exit sketch. Now that circle we have to extrude down a whole long ways, but just a little ways in uh, to the body to make a little recess. So uh, extruded cut. Well, that's too far. Let's try uh, 10 inches. Let's try could measure it, but trial and error works pretty well. Um, let's try 20 inches. Okay. And let's try 21. And that's just about right. 
We don't want to go in too far because we want to leave lots of um, material for the mount screw to hold on to. But that little recess will help give us better data by letting the uh, cap screw, that uh, mount screw, uh, fit down into the model just a little bit. So let's call it good. So there's our recess for the cap screw and a nice uh, flat shoulder for the cap screw to uh, push against and that's also a nice thing to do and uh, we'll get better data because we won't have all the drag of that cap screw sitting out in the airflow. Alright, well believe it or not our model is ready to print. Okay, So we're going to save it File, uh, save. I think we already call it. Oh no, we're going to save as uh, not full scale, but 48 scale. Okay. It's no longer full scale. We scaled at 148. And we're also going to save it as a step file so that other programs can use it. You have to choose it down here. Step file is kind of more universal. A SolidWorks solid part file is specific to SolidWorks and only a few other programs can read it. So here we go. We're going to save it as a step file and all bodies. And then we're also, as soon as it's ready, there we go. We're also going to save it as a stereolithograph file, okay, an STL, and that's actually the file that a 3D printer uses, or a stereolithograph machine, and it's probably uh, ready to go and can just be put on the machine uh, in the form it's in now. So we're going to save it, and we'll say, yep, we love it and all bodies and we're done.